Hello guys, Nigel with you again. Uh, Nigel's Land Rover Channel, Defender Keswick 90, whatever you want to call it. And um, if you're wondering where it's got that name, it's because of um, Defender Orkney 90. His channel, he's an Australian guy, I think he's based in Victoria. One of the best Land Rover channels there is on YouTube for actual off-roading. Um, not much in the way of actually building and the technical sort of stuff like I do, but for watching what these things are capable of with a bit of modification and how they compare to the, you know, the more common Japanese 4x4s and stuff. Really, really good to watch. Some fantastic, you've got mud, you've got rocks, you've got climbing, you've got descents, you've got water, you've got desert, everything. So, uh, yeah, worth watching. Defender 90 Orkney. Um, or Defender Orkney 90, whatever it is. So have a look on there. But um, today we are going to be actually getting on with things and getting this front axle together. Now you know I've done the diff, I've done the swivels, um, the axle's all done, we've got all the trusses on there, everything's painted. If you haven't seen all that, go back and have a look. Uh, you'll see the results of all that today. And uh, and then we can um, and then we can push forward and get the wheels on and start getting the rear axle done and getting it all back together. So before long, this chassis is gonna be back on four wheels. Yay! So uh, let me take you to the bench and show you what we're doing. There we go, we can see now we've got the swivels here. They've had another coat of paint because I'm a big girl's blouse. So they're all nice and shiny now. You can see we've got the, the filler plugs in there. The shiny um, stainless swivel seal rings, which I got from uh, Land, uh, Bits for Landies. And then we've got these, uh, the other swivel here. We've got the diff over here that we've done with the beautiful Ashcroft. Look at that as if it's posed there. And I've got the lovely Ashcroft diff, um, ATB diff in there. Um, somebody asked a question, if you had an accident in front of you, how would you know if it's got a, an ATB in it or not? You wouldn't necessarily know if it's got an ATB, it could have a locker in it. Um, but basically, if you've got an axle on the ground and you turn one wheel and the other one goes in the opposite direction, it's a standard diff. Um, or it could have a locker in it. If it's got a, um, a tapped union in the top of the diff housing, uh, around about here I believe, um, then it means it's got an air locker in it. Um, if it's got an electrical plug, it could have an electronic locker in it. So, um, but if the if the wheels go in the same direction, it's got some form of um, limited slip diff. So you've got LSDs, which are plate diffs, and then you've got your um, your your torque biasing diffs, which, like these, you can see in there. There's a gear in there. These basically use um, helical gears. Is it helical gears I'm looking for. They use they use these gears anyway that run around and basically. Go and have a look. There's loads of videos. I'm not going to try and explain it because it is very difficult to explain how they work. Um, but, um, but there you go. So that's how you would tell. Um, and also have a look on uh, some other websites as well about all the different four-wheel drive diffs you can get. There's, there's simple little ones where you just basically put replace the star gears and the planet gears in your ordinary diff with a, with a solid piece which locks it. People weld the diffs up which locks it. So just because the wheels go in opposite directions or the same direction doesn't necessarily mean it's got an LSD but it means it's not a standard diff. So there you go. So we first thing we've got is these gaskets here and I can't remember the number of these I'm sorry. But that's our gaskets that are going to go on the end of the axle tube. So we've got those there. Then we've got these 3276G. These are the, but this this make here Cortico, they are basically genuine seals. So we've got those seals there. They're going to go in the back here, in the back of the um, swivel housings. You mustn't forget them. And they're the ones that keep the axle wheel out of the swivels. And on mine, even though it was 2011, never been off-road, never stripped or anything, one of mine was gone. I was, um, I was mixing oil with the passenger side swivel and the um and the diff and therefore the swivel was leaking because the oil was too thin and the swivel seal couldn't handle it and we've got our swivel seals here as you know i've already had these out and fitted them with those crappy tin rings here so now i'm replacing them with these stainless steel ones here um so that's them ready to go the other thing i've also got is these lovely gwyn lewis magnetic um drain and filler plugs um some people only put them in the drain. I want to put them in the filler as well because if you do suspect something going on, you can pull the filler plug out and have a look and see if you've got chunks of metal on there rather than have to drain the oil. I mean, you could do that in a field. Just pull the filler plug out and have a look at it and, um, and then put it back in just to see. But um, that's why I'm putting, so I'm putting fillers and drains in both the, um, both the axles and also a drain in the transfer box as well. So, um, that's what we've got for now and then we've got our 243 thread locker 
and I've also got this one here which is a, again it's a 243 thread locker it's just not made by um, it's not made by Loctite but this one's running out so I'm gonna have to use something so we've got all our bolts in here which have all been um, wire brushed on a wire wheel on a drill and these thick washers make sure you use these these are the thick washers these are the bolts that hold the the actual swivel onto the axle casing so they've all been wire brushed as well and they've had their faces filed to remove any corrosion and then they've all been treated with this which is a uh, cure rust like a rust treatment and then sprayed with a couple of coats of zinc rich primer um, which is basically what the bolts have standard now I always thought they were zinc plated but they're not it's, some people call it geotech um, it's another process called Dayton or something Dayton or something it, I don't know, I can't remember now, but it's basically just paint, and that's why they always rust so much, so they're a pain in the ass. And then these bolts here, these are quality Japanese Toyota bolts. Um, the point 0.8 on there, or the 8, I think is the point is just to show which way it goes up, although it's an 8, it doesn't really matter. But um, 8 is basically a torque guide, so uh, you get 4s, 6s, 8s, and it's a Japanese Subaru Toyota kind of coding thing. Um, but the 8 on here basically means you can get, these can go up to 12 pounds feet or something I think uh, but these are basically done up to 11 newton meters which is about 8 pounds feet so that's going to be absolutely fine you see they've got the included washers on them and they're plated rather than just cheap painted so we'll see how they stand up against the original Land Rover bolts here holding those swivel seals in the reason I'm replacing them is basically because these are slightly longer um, and there's not much thread contact with these at all but then when we add the 2.5mm um, the uh, the, shim, the the rings were going to be reducing the thread contact even more so I just thought I'd put these in because because I had them um, I recently stripped a Toyota GTA 6 turned it into a racing car one of these here and uh, I actually made all the bodywork on this um, this isn't my car this was a, a friend's car and uh, yeah I made the bodywork on that and I have all the moulds up here still in the roof you can see one there that's a front wing mould so, um, yeah, and then I gave up on the project because it was getting far, far, far too costly. Um, I wouldn't have been able to afford to run it anyway, so still got loads of bits for sale if anybody wants anything. So there's all the bolts and everything there. Um, so basically, we are ready to start going, and the bit you want to see is this. Here's the axle <clears throat> up, on its, uh, up on its stands. We've got it up on this um, car lift thing, which is, I really must do a bloody review on this. The Braddock Auto Lift is absolutely awesome. I've got these frames here that the axle sits on, so it's actually bolted in here with its um, with its spring mounts there, as you can see. But basically, here we've got the um, terra firma axle trusses here. Okay, um, you can get different axle trusses, uh, the extreme ones I think, which don't have a truss on the bottom. Um, at the time, I don't think they were available when I bought these, but so I've used these. A lot of people talk about losing ground clearance here, but to be honest, the ground clearance you're losing there. Is equivalent to that there so you're actually losing not much more than an inch in that spot there and then it's ever ever decreasing here so it's not really much of a and I would rather have a truss on the bottom as well as the top rather than just on the top um, nothing over it here but um and then we can go around here we've got all these holes have been tapped out and um, this is just a thin coat of cordless primer on here um, got some welded up added bits here. I've removed the the mounts for the um, for the anti roll bar, uh, which are on the back actually. And then uh, here we've got again we've got the uh, this this cutout in here is part of the um, part of the actual truss itself. And then I've drilled and tapped two holes here because I've made some plates up to go over. Because my theory is, if a stone gets in there or or something. Um, it ain't going to come out because the holes here are big enough for it to come out. So what I'm doing is plugging that up and then the only thing that's getting there is anything that's small enough to go in is going to come out with a pressure washer behind it or water. So all I can do from time to time is take this plate off, get the pressure washer down in there and blow it all through. So you've got four drains there. This is all sealed up. There's a little pipe there and that is for the breather. That's where the breather hose is going to come out. So we've got the breather going to screw in there, which is a Gwyn Lewis part of his wading kit, which I'll show you. And then the pipe's going to come out of here. That's actually a tube welded in. Um, this is the Gwyn Lewis heavy duty diff pan. I bought these as the DIY ones. So I've done all these welds myself and then cleaned it all up and made it all look a bit snazzy and then welded it onto the axle casing. So quite a modified axle there. Um, again, around the other side, we can see. 
Now, if anybody wants to make these, these stand back so you can see, it's basically a frame that you can bolt the axle to. And I've made this opening here big enough so that when all the hub and everything is all on there, it's big enough to get it off. So it'd be no good having something like this because then you wouldn't be able to get it off. Obviously you could cut it off. But with this, I can build up all the hub, the disc brakes, everything, and still get it off. So um, I'll just give you some dimensions in case you want to copy it. So we can see here, if I get a tape measure on that end, we can see on here it's um, 630 on the outside. This is, uh, I think this is 30 mil box I've used. 32 mil box. What size is this box then on? 30 mil. 30 mil box. So overall, outside dimension there, 630. And then it's going to be 630 tall as well, because I believe it's square. Yes, it is. It's 600. There we are. 630 square and then the opening here is 350 355 um, to allow that to go in and then just basically those two bolts there not two allen bolts because they were the hardest bolts I had I welded them in from the top um, and then we've got nuts underneath there holding the axle onto it so and I've put some welded some washers to the axle to the frame in there so that we don't have the whole contact area because I've used these for painting these are painting axles and there's also two tap holes under here as well under there so I could have two axles on there at the same time so there we go and that's a it's a really rigid really good little thing and it's all stood on a blanket because I'm a big girl's blouse so um there we go and um so let's start getting it all together okay so just come back here I've just been watch the um the funeral of his uh, of his royal highness Philip and uh, quite moving very moving um, yeah, nothing much more to say really. So we need to get some grease on these seals. So here we go. We've got our uh, grease gun here. So we can just wipe some grease on these seals. Nothing too much, just to, just to touch, just to make sure they're not dry. Make sure they don't dry out while we're, um, while we're building the thing. Don't want to go slathering it on because it'll. Uh, I'm not sure how it will um, mix with the the um, what's it called the the swivel grease that we put in the ones you buy in the big packets. So there we go. That's that one there. Just remove some of the excess from the outside. Here we are, and that can go over there and sit down in there like that. Now my plan is now is to put some worth sealant this stuff here is awesome worth super rtp set it's absolutely amazing stuff it's really really good and um my plan is to put some around this swivel seal I'm not trying to short to seal the grease in what i'm trying to do is keep the water of mud and crap out of this gap around here I don't want to build up in there because there are gaps in this seal that will allow it to go in, allow muck and stuff to go in. So I want to sort of just put a, a very light bead all the way around, like so. It's just enough so that when we when we put the the retainer on it's just enough to kind of keep it in now what I want to try and do is I want to try and turn it to, to kind of make sure it's all gone in but I don't want to get my fingers covered in this bloody sealant because it's awful stuff to get off grab a small screwdriver it should be able to just I don't want to damage the seal that's the main thing so that's okay I'm going to leave that like that okay so we've got a bead all the way around and no doubt some's going to ooze out which we can just wipe off afterwards so I'm going to plop this stainless steel seal cover on which goes that way like that I believe yes so that's going to go that way like that 
Okay, so that's going to sit on top of the sealant there. And then we're going to grab one, two, three, four, five, six, six of our bolts. And we will put some of our fantastic grease from Gwyn Lewis on the bolts just to stop them corroding. I'm assured by Gwyn he uses this rather than cock slip and it appears to do the trick apparently. So I'm going to try this myself. Too much on there. So I think you're probably off camera when I'm doing the grease but I've just basically got the grease gun over here and I've I've squeezed some out onto a paper towel as you can see and then I can just pick it up on the bolt just like so put the bolt in last one and there we go it's nothing too much it's just a spot you don't want to be putting so much on the hydraulics out or anything and then we can just with a 10 mil socket if you're using the standard Land Rover box it's an 8 mil socket Just wind those in like so. But, uh, it was lovely to see the um, the Land Rover taking Philip to the uh, to the chapel of rest. But, uh, not so lovely yesterday to see a report from one of the newspapers. I can't think which one it was, so I'm not going to say anything. But um, they actually called it a TDS. Obviously, it was a TD5. Oh dear. There we go. It was amazingly designed. Apparently it was based on a 130. Um, it was a gun. A shooting Land Rover or something. And um, Philip was involved with the design. Or designed it. I don't know how, how far it went into him being involved with it. But... Uh, Apparently he designed it. So there we go. So I'm going to torque those up now to 11 newton meters, give it all a clean up, and then we're done. I'll do the other one and I'll be back. Right then, guys, you're now looking at a bolt and a washer and an aluminium spacer and a threaded insert in a vise in aluminium jaws. Why, you may ask. Well, these bolts here and their thick washers, they are what actually hold the swivels onto the end of the axle. And because of the design of the swivel, let me move the camera up, because of the design of the swivel, we can't get a torque wrench in there. I know there are ways around it, so please don't fill the comments up with all these special spanners you can get. But for the average man at home who doesn't have any special tools, you're really sort of stuck with guesswork. And I've seen all sorts of different, you know, move the spanner this much and it hits it with a hammer twice and it feels about right and stuff. So I thought I'd try and do something a little more scientific. So what I've got here is a aluminium spacer with a thick steel washer. Um, going and a threaded insert below and this is an M10 bolt the same as the M10 bolts that are going to go into the axle The only difference here is I don't have any thread sealant on there. So that is the only difference I mean, we could try that and see if it makes a difference. So what I'm doing here I've got this bolt and I'm just going to put it in there just sort of just sort of You know Just a little bit more than finger tight. So it's just nipped. Okay, and then I'm going to make a mark on it here which is to my eye that is in line with the vice okay so so I know it looks funny from the camera from the angle you're looking at but if I had the cam if I had the camera where my eye is I won't be able to see what I'm doing so that's it finger tight so if we put the bolts in the axle finger tight and then just give it a little tiny nip with the spanner then we should know we're about the same place around about now the spec is 53 pounds feet I've got this set to here we go where is it 53 pounds feet and then we can come along with the torque wrench and torque it like so and we can see that it's 45 degrees so if we go from nipped and then go 45 degrees we know we're about right and you know we don't want to go over tightening them because we don't want to pull the threads we don't want to under tighten them obviously because obviously the um they'll all fall apart but um you know getting it about right I mean, even if, if we go, I mean, let's just have a look at 60 pounds feet. 
you know this is 60 pounds feet so this is sort of 10 too tight if you like you know it's only that much so and if i undo it and we go too loose let's see what it looks like at 45 pounds feet so let's undo that i mean it's bloody tight there we go just just nip it like that and then we'll go to Uh, what have we got here? 45 pounds feet. There we are. It's really no different. So if we go 45 degrees, we know we're in the ballpark. And if you want to go a little bit more, then, you know, fill your boots. All right, so in case you missed my video, I talked about this before, about these bolts. These bolts for the swivels to the axle. There's seven per side, but a lot of people think there's just seven bolts. I've never seen this mentioned before, but there's actually six of one and one of the other. And what it is, if you look at the shank diameter here in the actual bolt, you can see this one here, 9.89. This one here, 9.93. And you can see they're all around the 9.9 .9 millimeter, but this one here, is 10.5 sorry did you catch that 10.56 10.54 whatever okay and the reason for that is one of them is a dowel bolt and basically when you bolt it on you've got the spigot diameter here which is locating in the axle so you've got um, axial um, location there but the radial location is taken for taken care of by one bolt and the one top hole here this top hole here it's actually tighter and if you look at this bolt when it goes in here you can see it's quite a snug fit and I can hardly move it whereas if I put it in any of the other holes it's all quite loose okay if we take one of these bolts put that in there you can see it's quite loose and again in there it's quite loose now Rover Land Rover didn't engineer this very well to be honest. They should have made this bigger so that it wouldn't fit in the other holes. They should have made this, I don't know, 11 millimeters or 11.5 or something, 7 16th, so that that bolt wouldn't physically go in any other hole and then you would have to use it in the right place. So it's just a little something worth remembering that I haven't seen people use before. So, um, oh, by the way, I fitted these seals now. They've just banged those in with a 52 mil drift, just pressed them in with a, a, a mallet. Didn't try and put them on the press because if the swivel's slightly off, then you'll get the, uh, the, the the seal being pushed in slightly off. So better to just do it and feel around the edge, feel it square, and then just keep tapping. So there we go. So that's a bit of information. I'm going to fit these initially with no thread seal and get them all on. And then once they're in, I'll take them out one at a time and, um, and get some thread sealant on them. So I'm going to get some Hylomar on here because Hylomar is my favourite gasket sealant. I'll probably just put some around the inner edge. And then, um, and then get this all bolted back. So I'll see you in a minute when I've got it all on there. Right, so it's fitted there with three bolts. Um, I've got the other four bolts here. And what I'll do is I'll put some thread lock on them and put them in. Then I'll take these three bolts out and put some thread lock on. The reason I do this is purely because if you put thread lock on all the bolts, you wind them all with your fingers, you're moving everything around, you're jiggling them about to get it on, you're probably going to get thread lock in the gasket, you're going to get thread lock on the faces. And just to make sure everything goes together nice and dry, and the Hylomar is on its own, there's nothing else bothering it. When you clamp it all down, then you know you haven't got any thread lock in these faces. So it's all clamped down, good and tight, onto the gasket with the Hylomar, job done. So um, that's what I'll do now. I'll get some thread lock on those bolts, get them in, um, get them done up, nipped up. Then we'll get these other three out, get them in, nipped up, and then we'll go around and do all our 45 degrees. Right, so they're all on now, and... Uh, Swivels are on, all lovely, everything's all bolted up. What I did do, after I put some thread lock on them, I wound them out a couple of turns, gone round with a little paintbrush, like this one here, with some grease, put some grease around the bolts and around the washers and then did everything up again. Basically, I think the easiest rule of thumb for this is with a normal sort of 14mm spanner, which you've got here, it's about as tight as you can go you know, I'm sort of average strength, I suppose. It's about as tight as I could go, so I think that's probably about it. I'll, I'll, um, I'll check them after the first couple of hundred miles and see if they've come undone or anything. But um, I'm sure you'll know if they start to come undone because you'll hear a rattling. But uh, I've seen them break off here. So we shall see. 
So the next thing you do, you see I've turned it over on its side, um, or fork facing down, because now I'm going to fit the diff. And that's another beauty of these frames, you're able to swing the axle around so you can be working down all the time. And um, I've lowered it down as well so that I can sort of hang the diff in there and drop it in. But the first thing I'm going to do is get some oil on the gears, get some silicone around it, and then we'll get, uh, get it on. Okay, so we've got some oil on the gears and everything, and put some in the bearings as well. Don't forget, we haven't fitted the front seal yet, so I can get to the front bearing when I do that. So, again, I'm going to use this Worth Super RTV silicone, which is unbelievable. And what I'm going to do is make a ring around each hole and, and, and a bead all around the edge, around the inner edge. So, basically, we'll start here, get a bead around here. I'm not really worried about getting too mad with it because, to be honest with you, the ceiling that was originally on here, there was so much of it. It actually deposited itself all over the ring gear, <laughs> so um, it was oozing out everywhere. So I'm not going to worry about getting it in there. So we'll go around each bolt like this, and at the end of the day, we can always wipe it all up and give it a clean up. We just want to make sure we've got a nice even coating everywhere. You'd rather have too much than not enough, if you know what I mean. You can't go too bad because if you start getting in the bearings and everything, it can cause issues. Silicon in the around metallic parts is not good, not good at all. So be careful. I think I'm just going to put a little bit along in where there's these gaps, just a little bit, just a little drop, just to make sure we've got something in there. So I'm not exactly sure. The spigot diameter on here, how close it is to the actual spigot diameter, or the, the bore of the hole in the axle, if you like. So just make sure we have got. Don't want any oil leaks, especially on this one, because if you have to take this diff out because you've got an oil leak, that would be a pain in the ass. Because to get this one out, the shafts need to come out, which means the hubs have to come off, and bleh, lots and lots of work. So we've got plenty of silicon on there, so we'll turn it around now and we'll drop it in the axle. So let me get you turned around so you can see what I'm doing. You can watch me struggle getting it in <laughs> for some fun. Right. There we go. We'll just drop it onto these studs, he says. Just being the operative word. It's on. <laughs> there we are. That must be so difficult to do underneath the Land Rover. But basically it's down. We've got silicon coming out everywhere, so happy with that. So I'm going to go right now and wipe off all the excess off the top of these studs because I don't want to get silicon in the threads necessarily. These studs have been oiled. Now, something that Land Rover do here, they use nuts directly on the diff which i don't like i want to use washers so i've got some stainless steel washers here and uh, they're, they're m10 actually but that's fine we'll make sure we get them the right side up because you've got one radius side and one flat side it's always best to get the radius side up um the reason i don't like not having washers in there is because this is a rough cast surface it's not machined so when you pull your nut down the raised casting will kind of tear into the bottom of the nut and you don't know that you've got a good a good seat at all so the reason I'm putting a washer in there it's stainless steel it's fairly soft and it will just compress and not go around with the nut so that's my theory and I'm sticking to it I know on thick metal components you don't need to worry about washers you don't need them but in this instance I think you do because it's not machined, it's not spot faced, it's rough cast. So um, basically if you like, if you think of it, it's like this, it's like a rough casting sticking out. When you come down on your nut, the only contact point is where my fingertips are. So, and then when you turn the nut, you've kind of got the friction of it on there. I, I don't know, it's just not right, it just doesn't seem right to me. So I'm putting some stainless steel washers on there and I don't care just the kind of guy I am. Okay so they're all just wound down there so we've got a 9 deep socket, torque wrench 
And what I'm going to do, the, the torque on them is 41 newton meters. Pinion housing to answer case, 41 newton meters. So what I'm going to do is go first of all 25 newton meters and let it squeeze all that silicon out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go. 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 Let's Thirty-five. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Happy with that. Right, so we've got 41 newton meters. And this time I'll try and stay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Really starting to get somewhere now. While well, we've got the axle in this position, I think we'll fit our lovely little Gwyn Lewis magnetic drain plug. It's already got some sealant on this, so that's going to go in lovely. So we could just wind that in. And this is, I couldn't see any mention of any torque that these should be up, done up to in the manual, so I'll just do it up. There we go. <laughs> Sticking out quite a long way. Let's just there we go. That should do us. Okay, so time to fit the um, the seal in, into the nose diff diff nose. Here's the seal here. FTC five two five eight. Again, it's a Cortico seal, so it's uh, not one of the rubbish pattern things. Make sure you use the right ones. And these things are lovely because they've got the they got the serrated edges on the outside edge, which is like an extra little seal. And if you have got any unevenness in there, it'll help to see. It's like a labyrinth. And you've also got the lip seal on the front now that works on the back of the on the flange. Now I have seen people pull these in using the diff, but I've made up a little tool to uh, using the flange, sorry, but I've made up a little tool just to press it in, which I think goes into the right depth. I think it's five and a half millimeters or six millimeters. So we shall see now. So uh, I'll try it live on camera. So the first thing we've got to do is get the um, get the flange off, which you've all seen before with the tool I've made. So we'll put that in there. Then we get our big breaker bar on there, big one out now, 15 millimeter socket. So we just undo that like so, which makes it so easy with that big breaker bar. So we just wind that out and I'm going to have a bit of a problem getting this off I think because it's it kind of sticks on in the last bit. So I'll just give it a gentle tap with a mallet. Go. Yeah. It just kind of just binds in the last little bit. There we go, so that can come out of there. Make sure the shim isn't stuck to that. That's why there's no shim on there, is it? The shim's on the other side of the bearing. Get some oil in that bearing while we think of it. So that it's not sat there dry. It's noisy because it's all them, it's not under load anymore some oil in there and then we're going to um, fit this seal so this seal will go in I'm going to put a little bit of oil around the edge just to round this outer edge just to help it in like so okay and then that's going to press down and I, I know this is all clean because I've sandblasted everything Okay, so that's gone on like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is use the 
the flange just to kind of pull it down so I know it's gone down square. I'm not going to be grunging anything up. Okay, so we can just do this bolt up just to pull it in square. Just like so. In fact, we may as well just go all the way because it's actually pushing on the outside edge of the seal, believe it or not. Here we go. So we'll do that now. Pull that out. Pull that off, and that seal's gone down in. And I'm going to grab my special tool and give it a little tap in. So I made this tool up so it fits around the outside of the seal, and then that's going to go in there. So I can just put that on like so. And that is lovely. So I'm going to grab some grease. And one little thing I'm going to show you. This is something I thought of. And it seems to work really well. I've got a piece of paper towel. Screwed it up into like a tube. And then I've got this on here. And I can take some grease. And it just catches the grease that I don't want. So that works really, really well. Um, so I'm just going to put a very light. I've got way too much grease on my finger. I just want a very light application of grease on this inner seal here. Nothing too much, it'll just attack, attract all the grit and everything in there. And I'm going to put some on the inner lip as well, although it's got some from the factory. I'm just going to put some on there. And I'm going to give a quick wipe around the outside of the housing. I'm very tempted to put some silicone around here to seal that in because as you know that's the reason why one my diff rusted before my diff leaked before because it all rusted around there I'm really tempted to put some silicone in there uh, maybe not maybe not maybe I'll just put some grease in there just to kind of look at that paintbrush and just brush it into the corner I don't want too much in there that's going to attract a little dust and grit and everything to stick to it, but I just really want to stop the water going into that canyon, the, the, the gap between the actual differential and the seal itself. But as I say, I don't want to go slathering it in grease because it will just attract all the dust. Here we go. That'll probably help. I mean, there's some coralist paint there as well, which also helps. And it was just bare metal before. So now the flange can go on. A little bit of oil on there. Just a drop of oil around there just to help it go into the seal. Move any excess and then drop the flange on. Okay, now. These laser axles, I'm just going to tap that down. These laser axles have no felt washer. So it looks like, when you look at this, it looks like they had some sealant or something on the back of the washer there. So what I'm going to do is get some of my worth sealant. It's a bit dry, that, so I'm going to take that off. I know you can't see what I'm doing, I'm talking to you, but uh, I'm just going to get some of this worth sealant and put it on here, just a little drop, and then smother that around with my finger. And this is basically to stop anything leaking past the spline, or anything that leaks past the splines, to stop it leaking out. So we can also wipe some around in there as well. We can drop that down in. And then we need some thread lock. On the bolt. So can you see what I'm doing? Yep, you can. So 
Get some thread lock on the bolt, come on. Put plenty on there because it's also a sealant. Is it a sealant? I don't know. Is it a sealant? I'm not sure. Actually, we need something underneath the head of that bolt because if anything leaks past the splines, it can also leak through that gap there. So I'm going to put some of my silicon around this bolt as well. Just like so. Get rid of the excess. Okay, so I've just put some silicone around that bolt. So we've got the washer sealed to the flange, and then the bolt will be sealed to the washer. And we've got thread lock on the bolt. And that has all got to be done up to 100 newton meters, which torque wrench is set up. I'm going to get my locking bar in place to lock the flange in place. And we can torque that down just like so. And there we are. We can turn that now. We can see how much difference that seal has made to that diff. And there we go. Job done. So, uh, right then, here are Bawley and beer time. This is generally uh, what we do on an evening at seven o'clock. So, well, there we go. Axle's done. Oh, different ends have done and everything, swivels and that. Those um, end seals look ever so pretty, don't they? With those stainless steel bits on them. So, uh, there we go. So, tomorrow, um, I'm going to get the hubs and the brakes on and everything. And I'll video one side and do the other side. It's amazing, actually, guys, how many, how, how long this takes when you're videoing. Um, I'm sure Tom has helped me over at uh, Life's Projects as well. Because it just takes forever. You get the camera positioned and make sure you've got your tools ready and make sure everything's in place. And then, oh, God, you know, it takes forever. So, um... Luckily, when we do the rear axle, I won't have to show you all this because, well, one, it's not on there until you've already seen it. So, um, anyway, I'll say goodbye for now and I'll see you probably tomorrow with another video and we'll look at the hubs and everything. So, uh, shiny in the day. Oh, lovely and shiny. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye for now.